We all know that nuclear weapons have the capability to annihilate humanity multiple times over. Which is why no matter how powerful a country is, they dare not incite large-scale warfare. The past 70 years have been the most peaceful in the history of human civilization, all thanks to nuclear deterrence. Why do superpowers fear nuclear weapons so much? Because nuclear weapons and human civilization are fundamentally incomparable. Human society primarily relies on biological, chemical, and solar energy, all falling within the realm of low-energy cosmos. However, atomic energy, being the first harnessed by humans, belongs to the weaponry of the high-energy cosmos. The crushing effect of nuclear weapons on human society is analogous to the high-energy cosmos overwhelming the low-energy cosmos. In this video, we will delve into the power of nuclear weapons and attempt to explore what an ordinary person should do if unfortunately caught in a nuclear war, and whether they can survive by chance. A typical hand grenade contains about 50 grams of TNT, capable of destroying all life within a 10-meter radius. 20,000 hand grenades with a TNT yield of 1 ton. The first atomic bomb, Little Boy, detonated in Hiroshima, though technologically primitive, had an explosive power equivalent to about 15,000 tons of TNT, leveling the entire city. Roughly equivalent to 300 million hand grenades. However, Little Boy contained only 140 pounds of highly enriched uranium-235. A primary atomic bomb requiring a yield of 15,000 tons of TNT can level a city like Hiroshima. But the largest nuclear weapon invented by humans is the Soviet Tsar Bomba, also known as the Big Ivan Hydrogen Bomb, with a yield of up to 50 million tons, equivalent to over 3,000 Little Boy bombs. The Tsar Bomba's design had a yield of up to 100 million tons of TNT, with a lethal radius reaching 1,000 kilometers. The excessive lethality radius meant that the Soviet Union couldn't find a safe testing ground on Earth, so they reluctantly reduced it to 50 million tons of TNT. Following the explosion, researchers found that the Tsar Bomba's fireball radius reached 6.4 kilometers, causing severe damage within 300 kilometers. The electromagnetic pulse post explosion caused radio paralysis within a 4,000 kilometer radius. The entire Soviet military command system lost communication for over an hour due to this hydrogen bomb detonation. If a hydrogen bomb were to be detonated in the heart of Germany, the majority of its territory would be obliterated. For smaller European countries, a single hydrogen bomb could potentially cover several nations. This illustrates the concept of one bomb destroys one country. So, if you were to encounter a Tsar Bomba explosion, don't struggle, evaporate immediately. The process takes less than a second, ensuring a painless end. Following Japan's surrender, American military experts extensively surveyed the sites of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, meticulously analyzing the practical effects of atomic bombs. Little Boy detonated directly above the bustling district of Honkawa in Hiroshima. Little Boy's primary metrics were fireball radius, 180 meters, blast radius, 340 meters. Radiation radius, 1.2 kilometers. Primary blast zone, 1.91 kilometers. Those within this zone faced certain death. Ultimately, the colossal blast wave leveled an area within a radius of 10 kilometers, with the safety radius extending to 12 kilometers. A circular area with a 10 kilometer radius where one bomb eradicates an entire city. If you are within 1.91 kilometers from the blast center, don't struggle. The next second after realizing, you'll be gone. Compared to those instantly vaporized within 340 meters from the blast center, you'll just end up as a more fragmented corpse. If you're beyond 1.91 kilometers from the blast center, there might be a chance for survival. Upon witnessing the flash of the atomic bomb, don't turn away, otherwise, you'll be blinded. Immediately seek the nearest cover, be it a tree, railing, anything. Then tightly shut your eyes, cover your ears, open your mouth, take a deep breath, and hold it to prevent the shockwave from rupturing your lungs or eardrums due to the extreme pressure. After the shockwave subsides, swiftly find a hiding place. Never linger on the ground, as radioactive dust will soon settle. Once these particles enter your body, you'll suffer permanent damage. If you must leave indoors, remember to wear a mask and raincoat, especially a mask. 
after a nuclear bomb blast, immediately seek shelter in a bunker. The earth is your best armor. The design strength of underground parking garages in residential areas can withstand hydrogen bomb attacks from a kilometer away. You should hide in an underground garage for at least six hours because your city will likely face relentless consecutive nuclear bomb attacks. Even if a place has been reduced to ashes, nuclear attacks might still come because of the perimeter, which has interlocked all human nations with nuclear ties. The perimeter. The power of nuclear bombs is so immense that it can instantly wipe out all of humanity. If a nuclear-capable nation deliberately launches an attack, another nuclear power might entirely be destroyed in the first strike, losing its national strength and most of its nuclear warheads, thereby losing its ability to counterattack and being erased from the map. Thus, the perimeter system was born. The Soviet Union once established a perimeter system for nuclear deterrence against enemy nations. A small group of Soviet soldiers stayed in sunless underground bunkers, continuously monitoring various sensors, observing data like Moscow's power grid, seismic waves, satellite signals, and radiation levels. This was the Soviet Union's perimeter. Should the perimeter lose contact with its central command and detect abnormal seismic waves and radiation in Moscow, along with massive power grid failures, it would initiate doomsday by launching all of the Soviet Union's nuclear warheads, targeting all nuclear-capable countries worldwide. Bombing the United States, the United Kingdom, France, China, and potentially even Germany, Japan, South Korea, India, and others. This is the logic of the perimeter, dissuading any country from instigating a nuclear war. If the central command is disconnected and Moscow is detected to have suffered a nuclear strike, it indicates that the enemy country has exhausted all efforts to render the Soviet Union devoid of any nuclear counterattack capability. At this very moment, even if the perimeter team survives underground, unaware of the external events, most likely, the entire Soviet Union has already been raised to the ground. All nations would meet the same fate. If everyone is obliterated, perhaps a scant few survivors from the Soviet Union might have a chance for resurgence in the future. The existence of the perimeter ensures that when the government and high military command are eliminated and the nation is entirely paralyzed, the nuclear missile system still retains the ability to retaliate. In reality, within the five permanent member countries, each has a team similar to the perimeter, squatting hundreds of meters underground, serving as the final barrier of nuclear deterrence for the nation. They are the nation's last resort. If someday the United States were to launch nuclear missiles at Beijing, France and the United Kingdom would immediately condemn the act vehemently and advise China to remain calm. Russia would also promptly declare support for China, vowing to stand by China's side. However, all these efforts would be futile. China's perimeter's mission would be to launch all its nuclear warheads instantly and annihilate all countries. There's no rationale to discuss, no distinction between allies and enemies. Only through such a setup can the system ensure that no one dares to launch a nuclear attack against China. Once activated, perimeter likely means mutual nuclear exchanges. Perimeter is an emotionless machine, they won't bother verifying which country's nuclear strike hit their own capital. They lack the time for verification and certainly don't know which foreign cities remain intact and which have turned to ruins. Anyway, it's a straightforward launch of all their country's nuclear warheads, bombing according to preset targets. If a country's leader is decapitated and loses contact with the perimeter, the perimeter units among the five major powers will quickly be chain activated. Cities with populations over a million will face at least one nuclear warhead attack, while China's major cities might receive over 20 warheads from the US and Russia. Even if a city's reduced to ruins, the bombings will persist because when the US and Russia designed the perimeter, they had no idea how much nuclear capability would remain after their country suffered nuclear strikes. Their stockpiles of warheads constantly exceed demand by dozens of times. So, if you're in a basement, stay there for at least six hours to avoid repeated bombardment. If you experience multiple nuclear flashes or ground tremors within a short period, that signals global nuclear war. Whether your country has nuclear capabilities or not, everyone will perish. Seeking refuge in a basement is your sole survival option, but human civilization will be obliterated. There's an 80% chance of reverting to the Stone Age and a 20% chance of plunging into an Ice Age. 
dying early might even be a relief, while those who narrowly escaped death might struggle bitterly during a nuclear winter. The prospect of this doomsday is simply terrifying. No country dares to take such a risk, not even a fraction of a percent. Hence, the world has remained relatively peaceful in recent years. As ordinary individuals, all we can do is hope that a nuclear war never breaks out. This is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and comment. We genuinely appreciate your support.